Hello viewers, welcome back to my technology channel on YouTube, GTech. In this video, I'm going to talk about the science behind the swinging ball in the game of cricket. I'm also going to talk about the art and skills that one needs to acquire and practice in order to become a good and efficient swing bowler. Do watch this video till the end because it is loaded with information at every stage. Please share this video with your friends and relatives and make it popular. Also subscribe to my channel because you will receive notifications whenever I upload a new video. So let's start. Being cricketers and watchers of the game, many of you might have been fascinated when you observed a ball swinging at certain times when a particular bowler bowled. Some of you might also have tried to figure out the scientific facts behind such a phenomenon. You might have looked into some books, you might have looked into some articles, you might have looked into some videos. Also, you might have asked some expert regarding this. Even myself, being a cricketer at club level and also a student of science, I was always fascinated to know why a ball was swinging. I was always on a hunt for information everywhere. But most of the cases, I was never satisfied with whatever, whatever information that came across. Very recently, while surfing the net, I came across a research paper on the science of swing which seemed more concise and precise when it comes to scientific facts and explanation. It is also backed up by observations from a number of repeated experiments in an ideal lab setup and proper equipment. It also carries more weight because it is published by none other than a NASA scientist who is also a former cricketer at club level. The gentleman that I'm talking about is by name R.D. Mehta. He's a NASA scientist. He is a sports aerodynamics consultant. He is a sports journalist. He is also a former cricketer who played at club level. His research paper carries the name Fluid Mechanics of Cricket Ball Swing. He conducted his experiments in a special laboratory equipment called a wind tunnel. Super slow motion cameras were used to record the observations from the experiments. There were special sensors installed on the ball to record certain parameters. Fluid mechanics, a chapter in engineering physics, was used to compute the results and uh, explain the concept. In this video, when I talk about science of swing, it's mostly based on the research conducted by Mr. R.D. Mehta. So to keep this video interesting, I will be picking up some very interesting and fascinating points from the conclusions of his research. The first interesting and fascinating point from this research is that weather conditions at the ground plays minimal or insignificant role when it comes to quantum of swing that can occur to a swinging cricket ball. For example, on a dry sunny day when the temperature is about 25 degrees centigrade, if a ball could swing as much as 60 centimeters, the same ball on a cold day when the temperature is about 15 degrees centigrade would swing by another 2.5 centimeters extra. So this 2.5 centimeters extra is very insignificant when compared to 60 centimeters of swing that can occur on any day. So uh, similarly, it doesn't make much of a difference even on a uh, humid day. So that's what the experiments show. So isn't this point not interesting? The next interesting point is about something called as late swing that commentators and experts of the game frequently discuss about. Many of them feel that a ball swinging late is not a regular phenomenon and it's a special kind of delivery. When they say that a ball is swinging late, what they mean is that the ball starts to swing only during the later part of its journey towards the batsman. The findings from this research suggest that a swinging ball always swings late. In fact, late swing is actually built into the ball itself. A swinging ball actually starts to swing the very moment it leaves the bowler's arm. But most part of the swing happens only during the second half of its journey towards the batsman. The ball actually takes a parabolic path like this or like this. If the ball were to continue its flight for some more distance without pitching, probably it would have reversed its direction somewhere. Is this not an interesting point? 
Before taking up more points, we need to learn more about swings and how they are referred to and classified. To start with, basically there are two kinds of swings. So if a batsman is a right hand batsman and if the bowler is a right hand bowler, if the ball drifts from left to right into the batsman, that is referred to as an in-swinger or an in-swing. So if the ball drifts from right to left and moves away from the batsman, that is referred to as an out-swinger. Swings are further classified as conventional swings, reverse swings and contrast swings. Swings can also be achieved through some special effects such as Magnus effect and knuckling effect. Now let's try to understand each one of them in detail. So now what is conventional swing? So conventional swing is when a bowler intends to swing the ball in a particular direction by following conventional wisdom and swings the ball in that direction. For example, let us say that a bowler intends to swing, swing the ball out. That is, he wants to uh, bowl an outswinger. So he follows certain methods that are commonly adapted or commonly followed. And the ball swings out. So that is referred to as a conventional swing. So now what is reverse swing? Reverse swing happens when a bowler intends to conventionally swing the ball in a particular direction, but the ball actually swings in the opposite direction. For example, let us say that a bowler intends to conventionally swing the ball uh, out, that is he wants to bowl an outswinger. So he follows all the methods to conventionally bowl an outswinger, but to his surprise, the ball actually would swing in. So that is referred to as a reverse swing. So now what is contrast swing? So when the ball becomes a bit old, if one side of the ball is continuously polished and kept smooth and the other side is left rough and if the ball is bowled in a particular fashion, the ball tends to swing in the direction of the rough. So now since the ball is swinging because of the contrast in the texture between the two sides, this kind of swing is referred to as contrast swing. So let's now practically see how we can bowl an effective in-swinger and an out-swinger using a new ball. Of course, I'm talking about conventional swing. So let's start with an out-swinger. So to bowl an out-swinger, this is how I need to grip the ball. So let's say that you are the batsman and I'm the bowler. And if I keep the ball like this, this is the seen and it is in the upright direction like this. So now this is my hand. So I'm going to enclose it over the seam like this. You can see. So now with my action at the time of releasing the ball at the time of releasing the ball so the seam angle should be the seam should be pointing towards the first clip first clip like this so gripping is exactly like this but at the time of delivery the seam should be pointing towards first clip so now the angle between the upright position and the angle that you deliver the ball should be around 20 degrees, very important, 20 degrees. So the air coming from that side should be hitting somewhere here at the edge of the seam. So this is the first criteria. Next thing is at the time of delivery you should be able to give it a back spin like this at the seam like this
So the rate of backspin should be around 11 revolutions per second. The rate of backspin should be 11 revolutions per second. So of course, uh, it's, it's very difficult to uh, know like at what revolutions you are releasing. But of course, if you practice and if you find out a particular way when you are swinging maximum, probably you will be swinging at, you will be spinning the ball at 11 revolutions per second. So that is the next criteria. So now this is the grip. I'm releasing the ball. I'm giving it a backspin. The next important thing is throughout its journey, the ball should not wobble at all in the sense if the ball travels something like this. So once again, it would not swing properly or it would not swing at all. So ball should travel exactly like this, of course, with backspin in this direction only. Okay, very important. Watch this carefully. And finally, to swing the ball maximum, the speed of the delivery should be around 67 miles per hour. That's around 107, 108 kilometers per hour. So that should be the optimum speed. So if you try to bowl beyond that speed, even then the quantum of swing will start reducing. Even if you bowl at a speed less than that, even then the quantum of speed will start reducing. At some point, maybe at uh, 125 kilometers, 28 kilometers, you might not you might not be able to swing the ball at all. So it's very important that you keep the speed of the ball at around 107, 108, 110. So within that speed. So that is how uh, you can bowl an out swinger. So when it comes to an in swing, in swinging delivery, everything is everything everything is the same except that instead of pointing the seam towards the first leg, you are going to point the seam towards the fine leg or leg slip, whatever uh, you want. So, see for example, I should be able to deliver the ball something like this. Once again, the seam angle should be 20 degrees. So if you are able to do that, without any doubt, the ball would swing. Once again, you are going to give it a backspin, you are going to keep it without wobbling, you are uh, going to bowl at 67 miles per hour or 107, 108 kilometers per hour. So in both the conditions, you will be able to uh, outswing the ball and in swing the ball effortlessly so I myself like uh, I tried it out so I have a few demonstrations at the near the end of this video where you can check out I, I was able to swing the ball both ways so uh, with conventional swing so this is how uh, you bowl an in swinger and out swinger using conventional swing with a new ball so now there are two important questions that many people ask me when I talk to them uh, about swing bowling. So the first question is, so if a bowler bowls beyond 67 miles per hour, that is like beyond 107 or 108 kilometers per hour, so will he not be able to swing the ball at all? So that is the first question. So the second question is, can we bowl reverse swing? with a new ball. So that is the second question. The answer to both the questions is the same. So of course, it is possible to swing the ball. I'm, I'm talking about a new ball. It is possible to swing the ball even if the bowler bowls beyond 67 miles per hour or 110 kilometers or 108 kilometers per hour. But now the speed has to be beyond 140 kilometers per hour like if the bowler is able to bowl somewhere between 140 and 150 kilometers per hour he should be still able to swing the ball but in between say somewhere uh, between 100 and 
15 kilometers and 130 kilometers ball would actually not swing at all so that is the problem so uh, that is the first the, that is the answer to the first question wherein same ball for example let us say i am bowling an out swinger grip is the same delivering angle is the same backspin is the same but only thing that changes is speed of the ball now instead of 67 miles per hour uh, or say 110 kilometers per hour uh, sorry 107 kilometers per hour the bowler will be bowling beyond 140 kilometers per hour if he is if he has the capability so then actually for example if i'm trying to bowl an out swinger now so ball would not be swinging out instead the ball would swing in so the ball would reverse swing so that is the answer to the second question so if you bowl beyond 140 kilometers and if you are following all the conventional methods so instead of balling conventionally if the instead of the ball conventionally swinging it would reverse swing so i myself was not convinced but uh, I, I went to youtube and uh, chucked on to many deliveries those were bowled by um, who is that guy brett lee and john tate etc and uh, especially brett lee i i was able to observe like when i saw some clear videos i was able to observe so the, the, the delivery of the ball was exactly like this and it traveled without wobble and it was a little bit spinning but instead of ball moving out it came in so and the speed of the ball was around 140 140 kilometers per hour so uh, that, that's a very big evidence that uh, a new ball can reverse swing and of course uh, uh, a new ball bowler with a higher speed can also swing the ball so now how to swing the ball when the ball is semi new or a bit old so this is explained through a concept called contrast swing which was coined by mr rd mehta himself so you can conventional swing the ball and you can also reverse swing the ball uh, when the ball is semi new or even old so to start with you might have observed that during the course of a match players continuously polish one side of the ball on their shoulders on their thighs etc so by doing this what they do is they keep one side of the ball smooth and leave the other side of the ball rough so they try to create a contrast in texture between the two sides as much as possible so in this way it's it's possible to conventional swing as and also reverse swing very effectively for example let us say that i want to bowl a conventional in swinger when the ball is semi new or when the ball is little bit old but what i have done is i have maintained the smoothness uh, on the surface on one side uh, of the surface on one side and uh, i have left the other side rough and now there is a contrast so the first thing is i will try to keep the seam orientation for example if i'm planning to bowl an, bowl an out swinger I, I will try to keep the seam orientation towards the slips so uh, there is no difference in that so now the smooth surface the smooth surface is facing towards the batsman so smooth for if this is the smooth surface for example here so it's facing the batsman and the rough surface is on the seam side so now if i bowl so i should be able to bowl a conventional out swinger so ball will swing towards the rough side towards the seam side okay so now the same ball if i want to bowl a reverse swing so i'm just going to switch the sides like this okay so now seam orientation is once again towards the first slip and this is the rough side which is facing the batsman and this is the smooth side 
and if I am able to bowl uh, at a particular speed, so the critical speed initially with the new ball was for was around 145. Now probably if I am able to bowl at around 130, 135, I should be able to reverse swing the ball. So please observe. So this is the rough side. This is the seam still pointing towards the slips and this is the smooth side and now instead of uh, swinging this side now if I pull at around 130 the ball will swing in so it will be an in swinger so if I were to keep the ball like this and probably the rough was here and if I had pulled at around 130 or something like that I would have out swing the ball so it would have swung the swung on the rough side so by just switching the sides even if you are just a natural out swing bowler for example so you can only bowl out swingers because of your action so once the ball becomes a little bit older by just switching the sides you can bowl in swingers and you can also bowl out swingers so sometimes when the ball becomes still older let us say the seam also will get get bashed in so seam also is not that very prominent so in that case let us assume that you have still maintained the smoothness on one, one surface and the other surface is rough in that case for example if you bowl the ball exactly on the seam upright like this of course giving some back backspin is standard always so this backspin is standard so you are bowling like this so in that case the ball will always swing towards the rough conventional okay so even reverse is possible so you might have observed at certain times when a bowler bowls exactly like this the ball pitches and then starts drifting the ball pitches and then starts drifting so even that is because of the contrast in roughness so even an ineffective ball wherein actually everything is bashed in and it's very old so even then you can uh, impart certain amount of swing if you uh, practice all the things that have uh, I've said so that's how uh, uh, you can swing the ball with a semi new and an old ball known methods by which you can swing the ball effectively when the ball is very old so the first method is called as uh, Magnus effect or it is also called as Malinga effect because he made it very popular so in Magnus effect uh, a ball can be swung even when uh, it's it's 50 or 70 years old when there is no contrast between the two sides and the seam is bashed in and there is no prominent seam at all and the ball might also be soft by then so in this case what you need to do is so this is the seam orientation like you might have observed uh, when Malinga bowls he, he bowls with a uh, with an action wherein uh, his arm is not straight like it's at an angle so he is bowling the ball at this angle so by doing so the method that he follows is he imparts maximum amount, amount of backspin here very huge amount of backspin like this so now in this angle the ball is hurled towards the batsman with a great amount of spin and this ball for example at this angle will swing in like this so 
that's how he is able to bowl those uh, deadly archers. The ball dips, the ball swings in and traps the batsman. So he can do that even, uh, even in the 70th over of the match or even probably last ball of the match. So that is the Magnus effect. There is also something called as knuckling effect wherein the ball is bowled at lower speeds without any spin at all. It's very still while going to while uh, traveling towards the batsman. So even here, uh, of course, because of the scene, ball is observed to swing and the swing is very unpredictable. So uh, this knuckling ball is usually uh, uh, probably uh, heavily used when a bowler is bowling the slower delivery that is less than uh, uh, 70 miles per hour uh, with an old ball or uh, even a semi new ball so it works very well so that's called uh, knuckling effect so uh, uh, so that's about all the uh, different swings uh, that one can probably learn and bowl uh, in a cricket match. So I provided link to Mr. R.D. Mehta's research article in the description. So I also have provided few more interesting links. Uh, so please subscribe to my channel and please like this video because I am going to bring in more such videos in the near future, of course on cricket. So most likely my next video will be on how to become an effective leg spin bowler. So it will be very interesting. So that's why you need to subscribe. Actually I thought that uh, I would also cover some theoretical aspects uh, with respect to uh, the science behind the swinging ball. So I thought that I would explain, I, I would explain uh, the fluid mechanics of the swinging ball as explained by uh, Mr. R.D. Mehta. So for that uh, I, uh, I read the article several times and try to understand it so then uh, when I tried to include that in this video like uh, it became uh, very big it became very lengthy so I thought that I would uh, make a separate video on that so for now uh, I'm concluding this video with uh, a small demonstration so uh, wherein actually I'm uh, myself bowling at the nets trying to uh, emulate so whatever I have tried to explain here, so uh, just take it as fun, please do not troll me because I am an old man, I will not be able to generate uh, the same pace that uh, youngsters can generate but still I was able to uh, swing the ball and uh, I was able to find out that whatever theory says, it also works in practice. So happy, happy viewing, uh, enjoy life, thank you, good luck.